invite you to join us in this worship of Unity Presbyterian Church. I am Pastor Christine Kaplunas, and this is our ministry intern and pianist extraordinaire, Melody Kosabuki. We will be um, drawing our reading from Ezekiel today, but I invite you into this time to center your hearts and let us listen to God's love made flesh through word, through the membrance of sacrament, and through the gathered people. For wherever two or three are gathered in my name, Jesus says, there I am among you. O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We open with the song, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. That's going to be found in your Presbyterian hymnal number 438. We'll be singing the first verse. verses of this chapter about the valley of the dry bones, and yet I think there's something that we can still learn from these later verses. So starting in verse 15. The word of the Lord came to me, mortal, take a stick and write on it, for Judah and the Israelites associated with it. Then take another stick and write on it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and all the house of Israel associated with it. And join them together into one stick, so that they may become one in your hand. And when your people say to you, Will you not show us what, this, what you mean by this? Say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am about to take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel associated with it. And I will put the stick of Judah upon it, and make them one stick, in order that they may be one in my hand. When the sticks on which you write are in your hand before their eyes, then say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I will take the people of Israel from the nations among which they have gone, and will gather them from every quarter, and bring them to their own land. I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king over them all. Never again shall they be two nations, and never again shall they be divided into two kingdoms. They shall never again defile themselves with the idols and the detestable things or with any of their transgressions. I will save them from all the apostasies into which they have fallen and will cleanse them 
when, uh, then they shall be my people, and I will be their God. My servant David shall be king over them, and they shall have one shepherd. They shall follow my ordinances and be careful to observe my statutes. They shall live in the land that I gave to my servant Jacob, in which your ancestors lived. They and their children and their children's children shall live there forever, and my servant David shall be their prince forever. I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will bless them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary among them forevermore. My dwelling place, says the Lord, shall be with them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Then the nations shall know that I, the Lord, sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary is among them forevermore. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I know that many of you are watching this on Facebook right now, and I wonder how many of you are scrolling through your feed at the same time with a little subset of a window and then kind of catching up on your friends and the news and all that's going on. So I encourage you, if you can do that, please feel free to scroll. Don't click on any links though, I want your attention. If you find something good, save it for later. As you are scrolling, how many times do you see the face of a beautiful child, or the blooming flowers, or delicious food, or adorable pets? Friends you haven't seen since college, or old buddies that are still getting together and rejoicing. And then how many times do you see something that people are really divided about? Maybe a post about mask wearing, or COVID testing, or about Trump, or climate change, or flooding. Actually, I hope we're all pretty well united about flooding. I hope that's not divisive. But I wonder, as I scroll through my feed, since when did our politicians' names and faces become so singularly divisive? It's strange to see how people respond with hearts or angry faces and then comment with vomit emojis. I don't know if you see this, but I see it. So let's get some distance out of this reality. I want you to pretend you are an alien. Your whole life has been tied up in completely different stories. You come to Earth, specifically to the United States, as a visitor who seeks to learn about these American brand of humans. Pretend that these aren't your dramas. What do they feel like now? Who are these partisans? Why do they reject the other parties so easily? How did the American parties even get so divided? They don't always act consistently with their own proclaimed values. Is it because humans are so complicated? Perhaps they don't divide neatly down the middle, so the drama of this is not an all-out civil war, but maybe we're looking at a, a series of campaigns from either side to convince that middle block, those independents, to side one way or another for an election or two. So then let's listen to the scripture again about Israel and Judah. After Solomon, the last king of the United Kingdoms, the nation of Israel divided into northern and southern kingdoms, divided based on what is the proper transfer of leadership, or who's in charge. They were both eventually conquered by other peoples, and their people were exiled out of the land. These two kingdoms are represented in the stories of Jesus through the Jews of the southern kingdom and the Samaritans of the northern when the southern kingdom was allowed to return to their land, they did not readily welcome the descendants of the northern kingdom. They kept their divisions even in exile. And then there were these people who stayed in their exiled land. They built houses and planted vineyards and had children. So this kingdom of David was so long ago, it seemed more like a legacy than a genealogy or a legend. It was a kingdom divided in so many complicated ways. But those David times, everybody would agree, were some good times. David represented a time when the faithful descendants of Abraham could look back and remember their own power and prosperity and self-determination. However, the image that the Lord gives to Ezekiel is less to do with going back when times were simpler, 
and more about regrafting the tree of Jesse. The prophet demonstrates the will of God to bring back the peoples who have grown so far apart. And this is because they belong together, and the Lord is their God. That's the thing that inspires me out of this prophet's demonstration. The sticks are not necessarily broken apart with two ma matching branches. It's like both sides have their own particularities, their own stories that separate them from each other. They had worn down in different patterns over time, perhaps. Maybe one was smoothed down to driftwood by water, and the other maybe was overrun with termites at one time. And yet, they belong together. No matter how many strange differences they display, they belong together because the Lord is their God. Friends, I don't know how the church could be as divided as it is. We have let politics tell us who we are. We have let our pride tell us who we are. We have let trends or styles or cults of personality define who we are. But as the church, whether we like it or not, we belong together because the Lord is our God. We are God's children. And this is possible not just by the imagery of Ezekiel, but by the grace of Jesus Christ, who invites us into relationship. I say invite us, not to mean simply that each of us is divided individually, though that is still true. But I say this to remind you that there were plenty of people in the world during the time of Ezekiel's prophecies, but not all of them were from the lineage of David's kingdom. Most of us are Gentiles, like the outsiders of the many nations that Jesus called his disciples to baptize and to teach. And so this story of Ezekiel, this this history is not necessarily our lineage, our heritage, or our expectations. It is only through Jesus' grace that we share in these promises with our siblings of other faiths. Again, Jesus grafted into the history of Israel a place for all of God's children. This nation-building language of bringing together north and south was heroic and idealistic, the two sets of people, plus those families in diaspora, were all very different. But if you look at us today in the church, there are already differences, especially back on planet America land. When we think of the good old days, it might have seemed different to someone if they were, say, Irish American versus Polish American or African American or Chinese American. We certainly have different experiences and histories of living in this place together. We have been worn down or eaten away or built up in different ways. But regardless of these differences, we belong together because the Lord is our God. And we are God's people. You know, I am talking about the church. The followers of Jesus. We come from different corners of the world many different cultures and languages, and we've broken into many denominations and non-denominations, and yet God is the one who brings us together. So how do we show this as the church? What is our opportunity right now of being regrafted? Worshiping together online? Working together for justice? Praying together for peace? What could we do if God regrafted us into one body? So if you took a break from scrolling through Facebook through that time, that's fine. But I want you to go back. What's one thing that you can do together to build unity in the church? What is one thing you can do to show love for a neighbor today? What is one idea you can invite us to consider about bringing unity to the churches now? Tag us in the comments, or write it on this post, or post it on our page. What's one good thing God is doing today to regraft the church together in love? Amen. Please join me in the prayer for commission. Make us fully alive, O God, that our lives might shine like the sun. Our next hymn is number 374, Lord, make us servants of your peace. 
first line.
once again into our doors. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.